Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. This is the episode that we are going to submit Phylotyper up to CRAN. We are going to make heavy use of the R Packages book by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan. So even if you don't care about what Phylotyper does, I think you'll still learn a lot about package development in R and how we get packages up to CRAN. I have never done this myself, so I'm really excited to see what happens. I think that we've engaged in the best practices encouraged by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan in that book over the course of this long series of episodes. So I'm optimistic that we shouldn't have any problems getting this submitted. As I mentioned, we're gonna make heavy use of the information in the R Packages book, specifically chapter 22. If you wanna get a physical copy of this book, I'll have a link up here in the upper right corner of your screen that you can go to and get a copy from Amazon. I think it's pretty affordable. Um, I like to have kind of a, a physical copy of the book that I put my own notes on and I kind of mark up as I go through. And so maybe you would like that as well. At the same time, uh, the website is really nice because it allows us to copy and paste text uh, from the documentation in this book over into our code. You saw that perhaps in the last episode when I made that phylotyper underscore example function that I, I lifted <laughs> pretty much directly uh, from this book. So a number of things get really hard once we've submitted our code up to CRAN. Those are, would be included things like changing the name and changing where the repository lives. So I'm pretty happy with the name phylotyper, P H. Uh, Y-L-O-T-P-R, uh, and uh, pretty happy with that name. But one thing I do want to change is where it is living. It is currently living off of the Rifamonis uh, project. I'd rather it be on the mother project. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and move that over. If I come into our studio and go to terminal, new terminal, just want to make sure I've got everything um, current. So I'm on branch main. We're up to date with origin main. If I do git push, nothing should happen. Everything's up to date, so good. So now what we can do over here in GitHub is go to settings. And if we scroll to the bottom, there is what they call the danger zone. And so what I wanna do is transfer ownership to another user organization where you have the ability to create repositories. So I do that. <laughs> so I'm going to select the mother project organization and it's gonna be called Phylotyper, so that's good. And so now here, I'm going to type rifamonas slash Phylotyper. I think that's right. I think I misspelled it when I said it out loud earlier, whatever. So now I can say, I understand, transfer the repository, and then it asks for my authentication code, which I uh, can do through my two-factor authentication app, Authenticator, and so I'll go ahead and enter that now, 466-251. So now it gives me the option to assign different groups or individuals access to Mother Phylotyper. I don't think I need to give anybody access because I think me and the other members already have access to <laughs> everything anyway, but I'll go ahead and click Owners and then I'll say Transfer. And so now it says it's moving the repository to Mother Phylotyper. So I'm gonna go ahead um, back to uh, Mother and we'll see if it's in here. So we'll go to repositories and we see Phylotyper, very good. And we also see under that Phylotyper ref data, which we've worked on in um, other previous episodes. And so I see I've got an X here and I think that says eight successful and one canceled checks. So I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm pretty sure that it is passing um, and that we can see we've got good passing of um, our command check as well as our code coverage at 99%, which we saw before. Um, I'm noticing that I still have Rifamona slash Phylotyper here. So there are going to be a few things I need to change back in my, um, back in R, right? So I'll first start by coming to console and do a search for Rifamonas. So I'm gonna click replace and replace with mother. And let's see, so we'll do a find and I'll Go ahead and do uh, replace all on these. I think that should work pretty well. Yes, I'll go ahead and run my tests to make sure nothing broke there. Great. I'll go ahead and do document to see if any of the documentation needed to be updated. That all seems good. Um, I know that I need to update my uh, readme.rmd um, is going to be older than 
the MD, right? So if I look at LSLTH on README, um, I see that my, well, they're about the same age. And that's of course, because yeah, I would have changed Rifamonas to mother in readme.md. Just to be sure, I'll go ahead and do build uh, readme. This again, will install Phylotyper in a temporary directory and then run it uh, using uh, the R markdown document that is here in readme.md. There is uh, a code chunk or two or three in here. Uh, where? Uh, yeah, I guess the only code chunk I really have is telling people how to install the package. So um, I mainly point people towards um, the vignette. And actually what I see here is that there is something more I need to update here, right? So I say you also need reference data to classify your sequences, right? Um, and so this is going to be changed. Uh, so I'm going to go to my vignettes because I know that in my vignettes uh, for phylotyper.rmd at the bottom here, I put um, information on alternative data sets. So I will go ahead and copy this into my readme.rmd. Um, I'll paste that in and yeah, I'll remove this paragraph, okay? So I'll add reference uh, databases, okay? Good, and so now as, <laughs> as I was running it before, I, that caught my eye that I needed to update that information about the database. So I'll go ahead and build the readme again. All right, that went through without a hitch. I'm gonna go ahead and do a check. All right, so that ran through without any errors, warnings, or notes. I'm pretty happy about that. Of course, this is building it and checking it on my Mac. When we push things up to GitHub, it'll check all those other operating systems. We already did the test and that was working well. I'm coming to my terminal. Uh, if I do git status, I see a number of changes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes um, as thinking about kind of a freshening up of the package. So I'll do a git add on period. Again, uh, when I use git add period, I always wanna run git status just to be sure that nothing else has changed. And then I will go ahead and do git commit dash M. So freshen up after moving from Riffamonas to mother. So of course now it's gonna go through those pre-commit hook checks on everything and hopefully those will pass as well. All right, so it flagged dependencies and descriptions. It's saying not all packages used in your code are listed in description. So it's upset about use this. Use this is a package that we don't want to include. So I'm not totally sure what's going on here. So let's go ahead over to Phylotyper and then that's in data raw. That's where we're making the train set data. And then I think somewhere in here, I must have used this, use data, right? So I don't want to make use this as part of the package. This is um, data raw is hidden from the rest of the package when it's being built. And so I would like for the linter to ignore this. So let's go back to our um, pre-commit config.yaml file. And that was in the dependencies, depths in desk. So I think what I can do is um, include this exclude underneath it, like so. Um, and I just wanna get the syntax right that, let's see, we had ID and directly under that was exclude. So let me grab a couple of these and then yeah, we'll do this, good. Um, and I also see there's a data directory in here. So I'm gonna go ahead in here and exclude uh, data raw. And let me see if there needs to be anything special with the syntax here. Um, I'm not sure what this dollar or this question mark X is about, but maybe I'll grab that and wrap that around data raw. And then it closes with uh, parentheses and uh, dollar sign, and actually it's data hyphen raw forward slash. So, okay, so save that. All right, and then we've had a lot of problems with this linting stuff, right? Git add dot pre commit config, git status. All right, cool. And then let's go ahead and repeat our committing. So I'm gonna come back here and maybe just make it more specific with that train set dot R. 
Uh, let me make sure that that's what it's called. Data raw, trainset.r, gid, and we'll go ahead and add that and then commit. Wonderful, that passed. I have to admit, I'm using this pre-commit hook check um, kind of in a hacky way. I'm not totally sure how it all works. And so I'm kind of learning in fits and starts. If that hasn't been obvious over the past episodes, well, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> all right, so that all went through and we committed. That's great. So the next thing I'd like to do, of course, is push this up to GitHub. So the most recent version is up on GitHub. But um, if I do git remote uh, dash V to get the verbose output, I see it's still pointing to Rifamonis rather than to mother. So coming back to my mother uh, repository, if I go to code and then I'm using HTTPS and I click this icon to the right to copy, I can then do git remote set hyphen URL origin and then the name of the link. And now if I do git remote dash V, it's up to mother. And if I do git push, everything's now getting pushed up to mother and it will trigger a new build on those GitHub actions. And so as I go through the rest of this stuff, hopefully it will freshen up. And so we will know that it's built on all those other uh, operating systems. I don't anticipate any problem with that. All right, so turning to the R packages book for the next steps in releasing our package, uh, the first thing that we're gonna wanna use is use release issue. So use release issue will create an issue in our GitHub repository that allows us to uh, have a checklist of things that we need to check off as we're going through the process of getting ready to submit to CRAN and responding to CRAN and things to do after it's been posted on CRAN, okay? And so again, the command is use release issue. So we'll use use release issue. And actually, I'm not totally sure how this works. So I'm gonna put a question mark on it because that's the good way to get help instead of just guessing, which I tend to do a lot also. And so um, the usage is uh, to do use release issue with the version. Um, yeah, so I guess that's all we have to do. The version I'm gonna call is gonna be 0.1.0. .1 so let's go ahead and do use, so we'll go ahead and do use release issue. And then the version I'll do is 0.1.0. .1 .0. So this is a, the first zero would be a major release. The second would be a minor release. And then the third is a patch. So like R is 4.4.1. So there have been four major releases of R. Uh, and then there was a minor release four with a patch one. So there was a 4.4.0. Um, I suspect there's already a 4.4.2, but I haven't updated it yet. But this version was released on June 14th of 2024, okay? And so I'm gonna call it 0.1.0. Usually things become 1.0.0 when it's like an official uh, real release, right? So this is still a bit in beta mode. Um, I'm putting it out there for people to play with, give me some feedback. And after a little bit of feedback and back and forth, then I might elevate it to version one. Uh, in the meantime, as there's kind of little bugs that need to get worked out, I might increase the patch number or um, if it's a bigger thing, I might increase the, the minor version number. So I'll go ahead and do this. We see that this threw us out to my browser and created a issue for me, issue number five, release phylotyper 0.1.0. Um, if I come back here, um, I see it didn't really do anything other than um, opening the URL. Okay, so now we have um, all of the things that we need to do, right? And so we're going to get ready um, to hopefully do everything between these steps, right? And so the first thing we wanna do is use CRAN comments. And so coming back to chapter 22, um, you'll see that there's a comment for kind of each of the things we're doing here. So the first is use CRAN com comments, use CRAN comments, use CRAN comments to initiate a file to hold submission comments for your package. It's very bare bones at first, okay? And so we'll go ahead and do use CRAN comments. This is the file, right? And so like it said on the web page, it's very bare bones. So now we can check that off. Um, update aspirational install instructions for the readme. So let's go to file. I think we're good on this, but we'll go readme.rmd. And looking at installation, I see that I do have um, 
the aspirational version, right? The install dot packages phylotyper. Um, and so that all looks good too. Now we want to proofread title and description in the doc in the description file. So the key for the title is that it needs to be in title case where words other than articles like of, for, the, a are capitalized. You also don't want the title to be redundant, right? So if I said R package for implementation tools, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's obviously an R package. So you wouldn't need that R package. So these are things that might get it kicked back to you from CRAN saying your title's redundant or your title isn't in title case or whatever. It's too long, too short, whatever. So I think that's good. And then the description package for classification based analysis of DNA sequences. This package primarily implements naive Bayesian classifier from the ribosomal data project. We'll likely include other methods for classification and possibly some methods of visualizing the data. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this last sentence. And I'll say uh, the method was originally described. And so I'm gonna say originally described by Wang et al. in, and I'm gonna put something of the citation. So here, here I'll do Wang as the author. Cole was also an author. And I'll then do uh, in quotes, naive Bayesian. And there we go. Here it is. I've, I've already been here before, right? Um, and so maybe I'll do Wang, Garrity, TG, and Cole. Wang, Garrity, TG, and Cole um, in Applied and Environmental Microbiology. And I'll then go ahead and add this stuff, right? And then here I can put in less than and greater than signs the DOI. So I'll go ahead and copy that and plop that in here. And I think I don't want to have a space there. All right, so that should be good for our description. And we'll move this extra space here. All right, and so we've proofread that. Um, let's check that all exported functions have return and examples. And so that would be down in our R directory. So we'll start with read taxonomy.r. And so this had read taxonomy. So this is exported as we see here, right? And it has examples and it has a returns. So that's good. And then we'll do uh, filter taxonomy. Again, a return and an examples, and that is exported. And then print taxonomy, returns and examples, read fast a, um, examples, returns, good. And then KMERS has two exported uh, functions. One is build KMER database, and there's um, return and examples, good. And then there's another one for classify seeks that has, um, actually, you know what? I just noticed a bug, it's classify sequence. So let's go ahead and put that in there, classify sequence. And we have returns and examples, and that also is getting exported. So now we can come back here and we've checked everything. Um, check that authors at R includes the copyright holder. So again, that will be in the description and that is not listed. And so that should be CPH. And maybe I'll put this on the next line down. It's a good thing they've got these checklists for us. Uh, check the licensing of the included files. Um, and so we're all good there. Uh, so review the list of things at this link, basically. And so this is made by Davis Vaughn, who has a list of things to double check. I don't use don't run. Um, everything has a return value. Um, I've got examples. I think we're good with this, with all the title case stuff. And here's a description of things like this package, right? It's obvious it's a package that's redundant, things like that. I think we're good. Um, you get asked if there are any references to describe the methods in your package. Um, and so I've got this in here, right? And then uh, check the license year. I started this in 2024. I don't think it's changed. Maybe I can go back and just double check that I did put in a year. So license.md is 2024, and then this also is 2024. Okay, good. So we're good on that. So I'm happy with having gone through that checklist, and we can check that off. So now it suggests 
that we do a git pull from our terminal. Okay, everything's up to date, but my repository isn't quite up to date. If I do git status, um, I wanna go ahead uh, and see what's changed actually in some of these. So I don't know what changed in .r build ignore. So if I do git diff on r build ignore, um, it added CRAN comments as a file to ignore for building. That's cool. Um, I did change descriptions and that kmers.r where I changed the function name in the documentation as well as the CRAN comments. So I'll go ahead and do git add on .r build ignore description r kmers .r and CRAN comments. And then I'll do git commit and I will do um, going through pre-submission checklist issue. All right, so that had a couple problems. Um, so if I, let's look at what it failed on. So it failed on the spell checker. So if I do get status, it updated this and this. So what's going on with our build ignore? So I'll do get diff dot our build ignore. Hmm. Let's get add our build ignore, as well as the inst word list. Get add inst word list. Get status again. We're good. And let's rerun the commit. That all went through well. So uh, we need to check the URLs. I don't know that there are any URLs. So ah, very good. It found a problem in our documentation file here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and update document because this is referring to an old version of my documentation, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and double check that. So that didn't seem to update train set nine RDP. So I'm gonna go back to my R data. And so here I've got some stuff that probably needs to get updated, right? Um, and so then, for example, V19 of this reference is the this package, right? So this doesn't actually exist. So good thing that the URL checker checked. <laughs> um, and so we'll see the, the mother GitHub project. Um, let's see, I'll edit this, where you can find the um, phylotyper ref data package. Um, and so then this is gonna be mother forward slash phylotyper ref data um, for uh, for access to other uh, taxonomic reference data. Cool. If we go ahead and do document again, and then rerun our URL checker, that should at least get rid of that one. And so now in our readme.md, um, it's giving us a forbidden. Good, so that's all fixed. And we can come back to our checklist and do the URL check. Um, I did the build readme, but maybe I'll do that one more time. Good. Go ahead and check that off. And then we want to do dev tools, check remote, true, manual, true. I'm not totally sure what that means, but we'll go ahead and run that. While that's running, I'm going to double check over here in my code uh, to see that we did get the green check, which means that our GitHub Actions was set up to run on a couple versions of Linux, Mac, and Windows. And so that all passed swimmingly. Uh, so I'm not totally worried about some of these checks, but hey, we'll go through them because they're on the checklist and they've thrown people off in the past. So I got a warning and four notes. Ideally, we'd have zero warnings and zero notes, and of course, zero errors. This all seems to be coming into building the manual. So the argument that we gave to check was manual equals true. And so it's now trying to build the manual and having problems. Um, and let's see, the, the PDF version, which is all this LaTeX stuff, <laughs> uh, seems to be having issues. I did some digging and they suggested that you update tiny, tiny text, tiny text, which is a version of tech, T-E-X, uh, for uh, R. And so if I go to packages and then do a search for tiny, text here. Um, I'm at version 5, and I think the latest version is 0.53. I 
I don't know if this will matter, but let's go ahead and update it and see what happens. Uh, so I'll select all, install all the updates, and I'll say, sure, why not? So that updated our version 0.53. We're also getting HTML errors for building HTML version of the manual. And there I saw that there's a program called Tidy, <laughs> not to be confused with the Tidyverse, but Tidy. So if you go to html-tidy.org, this brings you to Tidy. Um, and if we go to get Tidy, this is basically a tool that cleans up HTML files. There's a variety of different versions uh, for Mac, Windows, and Linux. I use Brew, Homebrew on my computer, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy Brew install tidy HTML5 and then paste that into my terminal here to install the new version of tidy. So I'm gonna go back to my console and try to rerun this DevTools check and see if that might get rid of some of the errors we were seeing. All right, so this is getting aggravating. We still have the LaTeX warning as well as the two notes regarding the URL and uh, having the manual in tech format still lingering around. This is annoying me. Um, <laughs> while I was running through that, I did some Googling and found a command that we can use. So we're gonna do rcmd and we're gonna do rd2pdf period. So the period is for the current directory. And so then we'll do no hyphen clean. And so what this will do is this will convert our RD documentation files to PDFs, and it's not gonna clean stuff up. So this should leave behind the LaTeX log files to tell us or give us an idea about where it's gagging when it's trying to build our PDFs. All right, so that ran through, um, and it said error in running tools. So good, I guess. <laughs> and I think it's in this directory. So if I do ls-a, doing ls-a will show us all files, even the hidden files. And so this directory starts with a period, which tells us that it's hidden, right? So I'll go ahead and copy that and do ls on that directory. And you'll see there's an r2, rd2.log. So let's go ahead and do cat on that forward slash rd2.log. And this kind of shows us all the output, but we see that it is gagging on um, this type of syntax or text in our help files, mainly I think for our read taxonomy right there, as well as our read fast a. Let's see, the read fast a has it there as well. So I went to the Vroom package where I lifted this stuff originally and to see what they did differently. And I noticed that they have uh, these uh, uh, protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, FTPS in backticks. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that again and bring that over here. Uh, and I'll have to clean it up a little bit because uh, it's a little messy, right? So we'll go ahead and remove this. So the back ticks will give it um, kind of like code format. So I think that'll be fine. And then we'll go ahead, copy that. I'll save that, copy that, and then put that in here as well. Um, save that, and then I'll go ahead and build document in console. So it doesn't like that, so I'm not sure why, uh, but we can do dev tools colon colon document. That runs through, good. And then I'm going to go ahead then, and let's retry it with the check remote true, manual true, and see if this works this time. Hopefully that did the trick. All right. So that ran through and we are getting different errors now. So we got a warning that we have this hidden directory, which was the directory that we did the RD2 PDF into. So if we delete that, that should take care of it. And then we have uh, this URL problem, right? And yeah, so that talked about that. All right, so I've already gone ahead and deleted that. Let's go ahead, run this one last time and we should only get one note regarding the URLs. So that went through with just the note um, and basically saying it's a new submission and version contains large components, not a big deal. Um, I'm noticing that the URLs aren't there anymore. So I'm gonna double check URL checker uh, and then URL check, just to double check that those went through. Okay, so anyway, those appear to be okay. 
I'm not going to complain or ask too many questions. Coming back to our checklist, we'll go ahead and check that off finally. And now we'll do DevTools win devl. And so what this does is that this will take my package and try to build it up at a remote host. So I think we've already really done this with our GitHub Actions, but this is another approach to doing it. It's gonna email the results to me as it says, and I'll say, yes, I want that to happen. I think, think this takes a few minutes to happen, um, and then it will email the results back to me, and I will get right back to you. So running check win devel, I uh, told me that it was gonna do all this stuff and that I could then check my email in 15 to 30 minutes at about 4.20. Um, I had to go and do something else <laughs> and came back. And wouldn't you know that I got email back at about 4.30, so it was maybe a little bit longer than that. But what it told me was that um, everything looks good basically, right? There's one note, R under development, unstable, um, and that I think is good. I think that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that off my checklist. All right, good. And then I'm going to come back to my terminal and do a git status and get everything else committed. So that all looks good. If I'll do git add period, git status, those are all the things I want to commit. And then I will do git commit dash, um, amend. This will then add to my previous commit what I've got in this commit. And of course, it's going to run through uh, the, the pre-commit hook. Uh, and it looks like there may have been some spelling errors and maybe some other stuff. We'll see. So I see this first one that it doesn't like that um, my cameras.r has this long line in it. Arr! So I'll go back to that. Uh, where was that? Line 25. That's this. Um, I think if I remove that space, that'll do, and hopefully that won't cause too many problems. I think it doesn't really want a space after the colon anyway. So I'll go ahead and save that, and then come to my console and do document. I don't know what happened to, to that, but if I do dev tools, uh, document. So let's see what other errors it was throwing at me during the linting. Uh, let's start at the top maybe, and yeah, so there's these words that showed up as being part of the spell check. Um, and then what's going on here? Um, in description, URL is missing. So let's look at description again. I think that should have been caught earlier. Um, let's see, where is the URL? Uh, mother philotyper, mother.org slash philotyper. Uh, those should all be good. I'm not quite sure what that's about. Let's go ahead and uh, do another get status and get add those changes and then get commit. I uh, will do the dash amend. All right, so it's giving me this error still about URL is missing package URL. So I think what I'll do is look at package down YAML and see, ah, uh, it's got HTTP. Let's make that an S. Let's save that and let's uh, git add again, and then git commit amend, git commit amend, and see if that does the trick. So that went through. Um, it did open up Virtual Studio Code, which is what I normally use uh, when I'm doing some of my other programming stuff. So I'll go ahead and close this, save this and close this, and that completes the commit. And again, what was it that we were even trying to do? I think we were trying to do a push. So let's go ahead and do a git push. That will now be up on GitHub. I'll go ahead and check that off. Again, coming to code, we see that it just, it just got the push. All right, so let's look back at our checklist. I think we're getting there. I'm gonna hold off on drafting the blog post because I wanna get this done. So we're gonna go ahead and do use this, use version minor. Oh, but this needs to be in R, not in bash. All right, and it's, it's gonna add uh, 0 0.1.0 to version, good. Um, is that okay to commit them? Yes, number two. So it then added that, good. Go ahead and then back here and look at git status. Um, if we're ahead of GitHub by one commit. If you look at git log, we see that it incremented the version number to 0.10. Um, it said it modified 
description and news.md. I'm kind of curious what the difference was. So if I do like get diff head uh, two uh, to description. Oh, it doesn't like that. Tilda. I must have done back two. So let's go back one. Uh, tilde one. Okay, that's better. So we see that the only change was updating the version from 0 .0. 0 0.0.0.9 thousand, which is like a development version, to 0 0.1.0. And then the other change that it told us about was to news.md. So I'll go ahead and do news.md. And so now we see that we've got 0 0.1.0. And I'm gonna go ahead and modify this news to get rid of that title and make this the first release version of Phylotyper. So I'll get status, good, get add news. I'll then amend my commit by doing git commit hyphen hyphen amend. Of course, it's gonna run through the pre-commit hook checks. Everything is good though. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we're good, good. Now, we want to, I think, do the final item on the checklist, which is DevTools submit CRAN. All right, so we'll paste that in, run it. Um, is your email address that? Uh, yes. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and say number one, and it's gonna build it, and we'll see what all happens. This is the first time I've been the one to do this. Normally people in my lab have run this without me knowing anything about what's going on. So I'm really excited to see this go through. All right. So now it's, so it's gone ahead and it built my package. So it's a tar.gz living in this random path um, and it's 1.9 megs. Are we ready to submit this to CRAN? For sure, number one. It's now gonna upload the package and the comments to CRAN. All right, it says it confirmed the submission. Check your email for a confirmation link. Don't forget to tag this release once accepted by CRAN. It's adding CRAN submission to .rbuildignore. Very good. Um, and so let's see if I do get status, that has changed. Let's see what it did. So what's CRAN submission? Cat CRAN submission, all that. Um, I'm gonna leave that be for now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go ahead and add this. So I'll say get add both of those, get commit dash M, and then we will say, um, CRAN submission. All right, and it did a spell check on it. So let's go ahead and try that again. Now this should work. And then I got this email from CRAN. Dear Patch Loss, I'm gonna submit the package to Phylotyper to CRAN. Yes. Uh, to confirm the submission to CRAN, follow or copy and paste the following into your browser. I'll go ahead and do that, but this is good. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And I will then say, I have read the CRAN policies. I have checked the submission, um, which is good. And then I'll go ahead and upload the package to CRAN. So the package has been uploaded successfully to CRAN submission team. You'll be redirected to CRAN shortly. And we should expect to hear something back probably in a few days. So now I've got this email uh, saying it was uploaded. So I expect to get another email back from CRAN in a few days. When I do, I will add to this episode. It's getting long, but I think we're close to getting it fully posted up onto CRAN. So about half an hour after I submitted Phylotyper to CRAN, I got this email indicating a couple of problems with my submission. And so uh, I noticed that there's a link here for Windows as well as for Debian, uh, or Debian, which is a Linux version. Uh, I looked earlier and they're the same uh, log basically. So I'll click on this Windows one kind of scanning through it, um, we see that there is a note um, and that it's finding some words that it thinks are misspelled. These are not misspelled words, they're fine. Um, but perhaps more problematic are the invalid URLs. Um, so the first I notice is that it's there's an HTTP uh, without the S that I somehow missed, so I need to clean that up. Um, also, it is giving a 403 on uh, the link to the paper that I'm grabbing the algorithm for. So I think what I will do is certainly fix this uh, to add the S here, and then I will use the PubMed version of uh, 
the, the abstract and title that people can then easily get to this with. I think that's probably the best solution. Um, the other problem then is that in my readme, I have this as a link missing all this other stuff, right? So let's head over and solve these problems. First, what I'll do is a search for HTTP. Let's see, this is the problem right here in my news.md file. And this needs to be an S. Yep, that was in the news file, good. And then I have this that um, I need to search for. And that, of course, comes up in several cases here. Um, and yeah, so I will then come back over here. So I'll do wing, au, col, au, and I'll do naive, Bayesian, and 16s. Should get us pretty close. Very good, right here. And this is the link I'm gonna go ahead and use. For whatever reason, AEM uh, blocks web scraping, which is what's causing the problem getting access to that link. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And then I'm gonna come into these various instances where it appears and replace with that, and then go through each of these and clean them all up. So I went through and removed all those. Uh, these two are the RD files, which are um, generated by running document. So I'm gonna come back to console and then do document. And so now if I look at find in files and refresh, those went away. Good. All right, what was the other problem that we had? Ah, uh, yes, articles filotyper.html down here showing up in my readme.md file. What I really want is this. And so I will then copy and paste that in my readme.rmd file. So that's down here. And let's see, where did I have articles? Right there. So I'll go ahead and paste that in, save that, and then we'll do in console a build readme. All right, so that went through. And again, looking in here at the readme, if I do article, search for that, I see now that I have the full URL with the HTTPS. That's great. <laughs> um, and maybe what I'll do is the URL uh, checker, uh, URL check, just to triple check that all my links are good. It appears they are. I thought I had done that before, but hey, who knows? Uh, as we're kind of learning going through this process, you kind of go in fits and starts, and there's a lot of, you know, two steps forward, one step back. Anyway, all good. We now will go ahead and uh, do a get status to see what all we changed. And that looks good. I'll do a git add on all of those, git status to make sure we're not doing anything we don't want. And I'll do git commit dash m, and I'll do correct problems found upon submission to CRAN. Again, it's gonna go through the pre-commit hook checks. Great, I'll go ahead and do a git push to get that back up onto GitHub. And then we'll go ahead and do submit Cran, yes, that is my email address. I'll say three, yes. It built the package and now asks if I'm ready to submit Filotyper to Cran, yes. Go ahead and put that up onto the Cran submission. I then got this email from Cran asking me to confirm my submission by going to this link. I'll go ahead and check these off, upload the package to Cran, and we'll probably hear something in half an hour, but who knows, <laughs> maybe we won't hear anything. I'll be in touch. I went away to do some other work and came back to my email and found the, another email from the CRAN submission system in my inbox. And this one tells me it's been auto-processed and it is pending a manual inspection. So this means it got past the automated inspection, right? And so a CRAN team member will typically respond within the next 10 working days, okay? Cool. Um, and. I see down here at the bottom that it does have kind of that comment we had earlier about misspelled words in the description. If I go to this link for the pretest results, it says there's one note, and I'm pretty sure that that's this here. Uh, again, with those possibly misspelled words in the description, I'm not gonna worry about it. So I think if the CRAN team member looks at those words, they'll know that they're technical or people's last names, and uh, they'll hopefully sign off on this. And again, uh, be the next 10 working days. So I will check in with you in the next 10 working days when we get a final answer from CRAN. 
So a couple days ago, I got feedback from a CRAN maintainer who was looking over my Philotyper package submission. My understanding is that on the first submission, they're more critical than they are on second submissions. I feel a little bit embarrassed that I'm having so many problems uh, getting this through the gauntlet of submitting to CRAN, but hey, it helps you to learn the process, right? All right. So um, it's worried about my title having implementation of tools for. So I'm gonna come to my description. So I'll come into my title where it says implementation of tools for classifying DNA sequences. And let's go ahead and modify this. I'll go ahead and remove that implementation of tools for, and I'll say classifying DNA sequences to taxonomic uh, groupings. Hopefully that will be sufficient, all right. Do not start the description with this package, package name, title, or similar, all right? Um, and so it says package for classification-based analysis of DNA sequences. And I'll go ahead and instead say uh, classification-based analysis of DNA sequences. Uh, and again, I'll say two uh, taxonomic groupings. This primarily implements naive Bayesian classifier from the ribosomal database project. Uh, this approach has traditionally been used to classify 16S RNA gene sequences to bacterial taxonomic outlines, um, however they can be used for any gene sequence. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that reads. Um, one thing that I don't totally understand is that it, they say, it seems that you have too many spaces in your description field, probably because line breaks count as spaces too. Please remove unnecessary ones. So I'm not sure if they mean unnecessary line breaks or unnecessary spaces, but I don't, I don't know that I have any unnecessary spaces. These are tabs. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one line. Uh, people in my lab have done this for other packages in the past to make it a single line and have it start on the description field line there on line nine. So that's what I'm gonna do here. All right, um, so we'll go ahead and clean this up real quick. So I've got that simplified to a single line. Hopefully that will go through with no problem. One thing I noticed when I looked like at the dplyr uh, uh, description file, I noticed that they had a paragraph of a description like I do here, but that there started on the same line as description, whereas again, before mine was um, tabbed over like this. So I'm gonna go with this. I don't wanna experiment with this too much. I want it to go through and pass and be up on CRAN. So we'll go with that. Next it says, please always write package names, software names, and API names in single quotes in title and description, e.g. FASTA. So if we look at the title and the description, they're flagging FASTA. FASTA isn't a program. Um, so I don't know, but I, again, am all about making them happy. And so I will go ahead and put FASTA in single quotes. Um, uh, here we go, and we'll do FASTA formatted sequence data. All right, that's fine. Again, just trying to make them happy. <laughs> and then please add slash value to RD files regarding exported methods and explain the function results in the documentation. I thought I did this. <laughs> please write about the structure of the output class and also what the output means. If a function does not return a value, please document that too. E.g. value, no return value, called for side effect or similar. Uh, file type or example is missing something. And so I actually stole this from I think dplyr. <laughs> um, so if we come to example.r, sure enough, I don't have a value field. So I'm gonna check out what read R has. I may have said dplyr, but it was read R that I stole the hat from. So again, going into the R directory, and there's example.r here, and they actually don't have a value field. And so in here, I'll go ahead and put, so in here I'll put returns, and I'll say a string indicating path to the file listed in path, and um, I'll put that in back text to make that clear. If null is given, then the return value is a vector of file names in the uh, ext data directory. I'll go ahead and put that in back ticks with a forward slash to indicate that's a directory. And I'll go ahead and tab these over and then grab this so it doesn't go past the right side of the screen. Go ahead and save that. And so I will now go ahead and redo, uh, I'll load the package 
and do document. So that created the phylotyper uh, example. So I'll go ahead and do uh, question mark phylotyper example to make sure that there is a value and there it is. So good, that should be <laughs> compliant now. Okay, so I think we're in good shape now <laughs> to go back to our terminal, do a get status. Um, and you'll see that I made uh, one other change to rkmers.r. In a previous episode, when I went from using call sums to row sums, why don't I just go ahead and open that. Um, I had here done our fast call sums as being importing, right? And so I had forgotten to update that to be our fast call sums or to be row sums instead of call sums. That's what I meant. All right, good. So we've got all this. I think we're in good shape. I'll go ahead and do git add period, git status to double check. I'm not adding thing I don't want. One other thing that occurs to me before I go ahead and commit that is that over here we have a file cran com comments.md. So in here, maybe I'll say I have addressed the comments from, who was it? Um, Constance uh, from uh, 10, 5, 24, and hope uh, they will be found uh, to be satisfactory. Cool, all right. So go ahead and do that. And so now I need to uh, update that in my git add. So do git status, uh, git add crayon comments, good. Git status, cool. Git commit dash m. And so we'll say um, update files to address uh, crayon comments. And so again, it's gonna go through our pre-commit hook checks to make sure everything is on the up and up. So it again gagged because it had um, some words that it didn't know what they were, uh, the, the curator's name. So I'll again do get status to add the word list. So get add inst word list, and then we'll redo the commit and everything should go through swimmingly now. Good. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and do a git push and then returning to the console, I'll do submit, cran, run that. Is that my email address? Yep, number three. This will run through and we'll go through the same process again where it will um, ask me to approve the submission and we'll sit in the queue. My understanding is that if you put something in the cran comments file indicating who the curator was, that things will kind of move a little bit faster um, once it gets to that to that stage. So hopefully um, we'll have some good news here in the next day or two. Yesterday morning, I got the email that I have been waiting for from CRAN indicating that it is on its way to CRAN and that the package has been accepted. This is awesome news. If I come to the CRAN website and then go uh, to packages and then look at table of available packages sorted by date of publication, um, and I could scroll down and somewhere in here on 1014, uh, we should see Phylotyper right there. That's our package. I'm really proud to see this up on CRAN and it really makes me happy that we went all the way through and got it posted. If I come over to our studio and look at my packages um, and I do a search for Phylotyper, I see that I have Phylotyper as well as the phylotyper uh, reference uh, data package, right? And so I don't want this, I want the version from GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. If I click that X, it'll say, are you sure you want to permanently uninstall phylotyper package? This action cannot be undone. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I'll say yes, it ran for us remove.packages. And now what I have been waiting for is install.packages. And then I can say phylotyper and it went through swimmingly uh, and it installed it just like I had hoped. And so now I can do library phylotyper, right? And I've got it accessible, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test that by going to the phylotyper page at mother.org slash phylotyper. So I'm gonna come to the get started page and I've already done the library. I'll go ahead and set the seed uh, and so maybe I'll open up a script here so we can see all my commands. 
And then I'll go ahead and build the database using the Trainset 9 PDS, which is of course built into the package. We talked all about that in a previous episode. And then I will grab this unknown sequence, paste that in uh, and go ahead and run that. And then the consensus, and one of the things I'm noticing is that I'm kind of doing this and then copy. But one of the nice things about package down is I can click this button over here on the right side to copy to clipboard. And then I can run that to get the consensus. And I see that, well, I didn't run it, so I've got to do that. But now if I run consensus, I get this output, right? And then I think what I can do is filter taxonomy on consensus. And I can then use the default of uh, the min confidence running this. I then see that it has filtered it down. And I can then, of course, do print taxonomy. And instead of assigning this back and forth to different variables, I can, of course, go ahead and put this in a nice pipeline. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll use the default pipe from R. And there we go. We get our classification for our unknown sequence, and it works. And I'm just really happy to see that up on CRAN. So let's come back to our checklist, which is available um, on the mother phylotyper GitHub page. Um, I'm not gonna worry about the blog post, and so there's a few buttons here to click for drafting a blog post. I'm not really super worried about doing that. I'll go ahead and click Accepted. So this will make a GitHub release on here on GitHub so that we can know what the repository looked like when 0.1.0 was accepted. Opening up phylotyper in our studio, uh, we can see all of our files here, that looks good. I'll go ahead and paste in the use GitHub release function. Again, we see that it's got a release name and a tag name and the SHA or the commit associated with that tag. And then it pushed the local main branch to origin main. Coming back to GitHub, if I refresh this and then come to code, I now see that I have one release, which is Phylotyper 0.1.0, and that is the latest. Again, coming back to the issues. And if we, we've done that, and then we want to use the use dev version push true. So we'll then go ahead and paste that in here. Uh, there are uncommitted changes and you're about to bump version. Do you want to proceed anyway? I'm not sure what those are. So let's go ahead to our tools, terminal, new terminal, get status. And I see that uh, CRAN submission has been deleted. Um, I'm going to go ahead and commit that change before I do the other thing. So I'll do, go ahead and do get commit dash M uh, delete submission file. Oh, and I forgot to add uh, CRAN submission. So I'll go ahead and do git add CRAN submission and then we'll commit it and then everything should be good. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and say no and then we'll try this again. So I need to push that change. So basically what we need is we need everything to be up to date on GitHub in sync with what I have locally before we start working on a new issue. So I'll go ahead and do git push, and then we'll go ahead and use use GitHub release. Oh, and I think I went back too far. I didn't notice that. Anyway, use dev version. Now we see that we're gonna add 0.1.0.9000 to version, um, and it's gonna add a new heading to news. And so now there's two uncommitted files. Is it okay to commit and push them? Absolutely, I'll go ahead and do that. And so now, any changes that I make to the repository are going to be on release 0.1.0.9000. Um, I'm not sure that I have any changes that I wanna make immediately. Um, if you have ideas for other features that you would like to see Phylotype or have, by all means, down below in the comments, let me know. Um, or you could file an issue over on the GitHub issue tracker. That would be awesome and would show that you've really kind of gotten into this whole process of developing the package. This has been a long, Hall of going through and developing the uh, Phylotyper package. I'm really proud of what we did. Something I would like to share with you is the Phylotyper hex sticker. Um, it's kind of hard to have an R package these days without a hex sticker that you can put on your laptop or put on a water bottle. Anyway, this is a sticker that my son made. Uh, he's an artist illustrator, and so he's kind of taken his hand at making a few hex stickers for me for a couple packages like this and others we have in the works. Um, I'll go ahead and see if I can get these printed off so next time you see me, maybe I can give you a Phylotype or Hex sticker. Thank you for your patience. I know this has been a long series of videos and I can't get over just how proud I am uh, to get this up 
And I really am grateful for all the feedback that I've gotten along the way of people giving me suggestions or other people uh, telling me that they're following me to make their own package um, uh, for, for whatever they're interested in developing a package for. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this and we will see you next time for a different thread, a different series here on Code Club. Thank you.